Hey, so welcome back to Vortex Garage and part two of us fixing this rusty windshield frame on this 2001 F-250. Where we left you on the last video, we were gonna go back and try to figure out what coating we could use on this bare metal so that we could go ahead and get ready to have our windshield reinstalled. And it turns out a direct to metal catalyzed epoxy primer is pretty much the best thing that we can put on there. So I've gone ahead and picked some of that up and I actually had some in gray here in the shop, but I actually ordered a small can of white uh, direct metal epoxy primer because that way it'll match our white paint a little easier, especially because I had to go up on the top there a little bit and I'm not too sure what I want to do with this thing uh, in the long run. We'll talk about that when we're done here. I've got a neat idea if I ever decide I want to paint this thing. But for right now, we're going to keep it white. And I think the easiest way to do this and not have it look too crazy is to go ahead and use white epoxy primer. Well, before we do anything, I'm going to have to go ahead and take a Rolac disc with a little finer grit sandpaper. And I'm going to clean up the work that I did last week because I sprayed some WD-40 on it. I want to make sure there's no flash rust and I want to prep it to have a nice key for the uh, epoxy to adhere to. Once that's done, I'm going to have to come in here and just really clean everything up in the cowl while I have it uh, all exposed. And then uh, we'll get some pre-paint uh, cleaner on there and then we'll be ready to mix our, our epoxy primer and go ahead and apply it. Of course, I'll have to mask it off, but you all know that. Why don't we go ahead and get started and you'll see how we go. I guess I better get my eye protection. Well, I got our compressor running, as you can probably hear, and interestingly enough, I'm making a lot more dust than I thought I'd make, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my mask on. And yeah, I don't really like wearing this mask. It's uncomfortable, it's a pain to breathe through, and it fogs my glasses up. But when I got it sealed right, well, it doesn't plug the glasses up because it's sealed, but then it's still a pain to wear. It sucks, but it's better than breathing in this crap. I timed that perfectly. I made it sound like uh, there was a little pressurized air coming out of my mask. All right, so that's not the funniest thing in the world, but that's okay. All right, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take this spray cleaner. This is kind of like an orange based degreaser and uh, I've got it in a different container. So you can see I scraped that out and put something different in. So I'm gonna coat this. And I'm gonna clean inside the cowl and on the dashboard here and really just get all the nastiness off of here. This stuff works great. This is actually, um, hang on, I can show you. I used the uh, last of it up. This is uh, from Sun, Sun Fresh Scent. It's a spick and span liquid, multi-surface and floor cleaner, easy no rinse formula. Um, so I guess it's a Sun Fresh Scent, but I think it's orange. I guess the, the sun smells orange. It is an orange liquid. I think you can probably cut it. It's probably concentrated. So almost something like a simple green, but um, when you got mold and stuff on these plastic dashboard pieces and then mold like under here and just tree gunk and garbage and whatnot, this stuff works really well. Now I don't think it's gonna eat the paint. At least I hope it won't, but I've used it on interior stuff really well. In fact, let me show you. Check this out. All right, this is one of the uh, visors, obviously, and I think you remember from part one when we took them down, they were just full of mold and they were disgusting. They look brand new. So what I like to do is use this stuff. I think it works awesome. Um, I used a little brush to agitate it and really get in the crevices, get it clean. And then uh, you follow up with your favorite protectant and you're good, good to go. Yep, so as you can see, this is the area that I cleaned and here's some more areas. 
I haven't brushed all the way in there, but as you can see, this is going to clean this up nicely. And I'm brushing this as well, because while I got this off, and this will be my sacrificial rag that I'm pretty much going to ruin. So I'll spray a little more, let it sit, come in and clean it off. Like I said, this stuff just eats away the grease and the grime, tree sap, whatever else has been in here for years. And uh, like I said, use a brush a little bit to get it started. And this is pretty much what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and clean the entire cowl. I'll clean this piece here. But then before we do any painting, I'll be using the, uh, this is what I'll be using from Eastwood. Their pre-painting prep spray. We'll clean it off and we'll be ready to spray soon. So I'm going to go ahead and continue doing my spray and brush, getting this all cleaned up. See, it'll look like new when we're done. All right, so as you can see, we've started the arduous task of masking everything off and any experienced bodywork people will probably be laughing at the job that I do here, but it's gonna be good enough for what we're doing today. Now, what I'm using is this wrap from 3M, which is pretty awesome because it's got tape already applied and it looks really small and compact, but this film will actually expand to three feet. So it's pretty simple to use. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna do a strip here. Let me. Uh, Roll my window up. All right. So I've got a pair of scissors, which I find works really good. And uh, essentially, I'm gonna go ahead and start taping on the window come along the side and then turn down. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do two pieces here. I'm gonna do one that goes along this strip up, but then I wanted to get one that drapes down. So you basically just un unroll this as you're going. How about like a three pack of this stuff? And I think it's only about eight bucks a roll, which sounds like a lot, but I, you get like, I forget how many feet are in here, but I'm easily gonna probably Easily going to be able to mask this off with this one roll. So, okay, so we'll cut that, put our tape down. Then you just come and roll it out. And uh, there should be, right, that shouldn't be all of it. There should be a, yeah, here we go. Hey, look at that. We'll get that up over the mirror. We'll make this, sure this is pressed down good. And it even kind of static clings to the car, as you can see. See, so I almost don't need to, to tape it, but I will once I bring my tape over. Just so when I have the air going from the spray gun, it's not flapping around. And we'll tape that down. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do a, a strip that runs along the edge here. Now for the top, obviously there's a couple things to consider on the top here. Number one, I'm going to have a paint line, which kind of sucks. Um, I can deal with that paint line later. One thing you can do is have this so that you kind of peel it back and then you would have a bit of a curve and that puts a feather on the paint line. Um, this stuff, it's so thin and the mask is so thin, I'm not sure it's actually going to do that. Um, I can give it a try, in which case I should probably start over there. But um, at the same time, the paint line is going to be the paint line and I think we can go ahead and just sort of sand it down afterwards and feather it. And it's on the top, on the roof. I don't know, I'm thinking about it as I talk. Tell you what, we'll give it a try. We'll try to feather it a bit at least.
plan to show you something afterwards when we're done here of a cool way I'd like to paint this truck. Now, I don't know if the thing I'm going to show you later is the exact thing I want to do, but hint, I'm wondering if this truck would look kind of cool with a bit of an 80s 4x4 motif. Every time you see one of these style F F250s and they're done up, they've got that, you know, tribal patterns all over them and skulls and whatnot. And they kind of have like a, uh, I mean, that's the era of the truck. They got a mid 2000s vibe to their customization. And that stuff was cool when it came out uh, or it was whatever. Some people, you like what you like. I'm with you. But there's something about an 80s vibe that's sort of coming back into play right now. And I wonder if a truck of this era would look pretty cool like that. Yeah, look, we're getting a little bit of a feather if I pull it back. So that's the uh, intent, is to try and get a little bit of a feather. So yeah, with the shape of this truck from the... Uh, you know, early to mid 2000s, early 99 is when they uh, started this body style. Would it be conducive to kind of a cool looking 80s motif? Well, we got a little bit of feathering going on. So that's it. Pretty, pretty much, pretty much masks, masked off. One of the two things, one of the words that I want to use. All right, so we're going to start getting ready to lay down some primer, um, some epoxy primer. And what we're using today is from Eastwood. It is their catalyzed direct to metal epoxy primer. We're using it in white today because it's going to match our truck a little closer. So we're going to go ahead and shake this up. This mix is one to one and we're going to do two coats. So I'm going to mix up one batch. We're going to fill up our gun. We'll do a couple test spray patterns, get our gun dialed in. If everything's looking good, we'll go ahead and proceed. So we're using this gun from Harbor Freight. It's one of their cheaper guns, and uh, we're going to see if it's good for a primer gun. I've heard good things about them. I've got a couple other guns that I've collected over the years that are a little nicer, but for today I'm going to use this because honestly, I have not done a lot of spray gun work. So there's a little bit of learning going on here for me, and I'm going to test it with a cheap $17 Harbor Freight gun, which from what I've heard from people, these actually spray really nicely, um, at least for people who know what they're doing. So. So like normal, I found that I talked quite a bit as I went through this, so it made it really hard to edit this piece of the video. What I ended up doing was just chopping out the original audio and kind of cutting it up a bit, because, well, you're just going to watch me mix in some paint here. Well, this Eastwood paint mix is one-to-one, -one, as I mentioned before. And, well, one of the reasons I kept cutting this audio out was I kept saying two-to-one. Well, it's one-to-one. And the key point is always check your data sheets. It tells you exactly how to measure and exactly what rates you should mix your your paint and your catalyst or hardener. So we're doing a one-to-one -one mix here. One thing I noted was when I was filling the paint in the cup before I put the uh, activator in, uh, it was so thick that it actually had to kind of lay down. So make sure you get that measurement right as you're doing it. Of course, another thing I ended up doing is once we start mixing the paint, you really start to smell the vapors. And I decided to go ahead and throw that mask on. This is a good safety precaution. Kind of a pain in the wear, but you know, honestly, I'd rather be safe than sorry, and we went ahead and threw it on. So again, measure very carefully as you're going. And once you get that measured up, you're going to want to do some more mixing in that cup. There. I found that this paint mixed up pretty easy and uh, poured through and right into that nice cheap Harbor Freight gun we were talking about. 
once we're done with that, we're pretty much ready to get things buttoned up and do a couple test sprays, get it dialed in, and get ready to spray our windshield frame. happy with that coverage. All right, so we're pretty much wrapped up for the day. What we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and leave the truck here. We're probably gonna leave the masking on, just let this stuff cure completely before we pull it off. Now, in the meantime, I've kind of gone around and checked and it is starting to cure, it's getting tacky. You know, we did the, uh, the wait time for the second coat that the uh, data sheet said and everything seemed to mix well, everything seemed to apply well, there's no runs, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with it. And uh, that's actually good, because like I said, this is another area that I personally need more practice in. I've not used professional HVLP spray gun equipment before, 
most of my painting in the past has been just rattle can stuff, or if the best is the uh, little 2K cans where you have the catalyst in them. And those are great. You just pop them, spray them, toss them. Um, I got to tell you, my experience today is whew, prep. Like they say, prep is king. And I didn't even prep this like you'd want to do if it was a perfect car. I mean, you can see the lines where I sanded up there, you know, where I sanded the paint away. I didn't body fill it. I didn't make it perfect. Um, it's an old work truck for the time being. I just wanted to get the epoxy primer on it so I can get the windshield back in and then decide what we want to do later on about repainting it. And the whole thing is, if you were to look at this truck, it's got dents and dings and scraped paint. I mean, it's at the point where that's the least of the worries. So eventually we will do some of this truck and we'll talk about that in a second. But again, going back to my experience today, I think it was pretty good and I'm, I'm happy that I did this and it's given me a good experience of what it takes to use those guns. And like I said, prep, obviously tons of prep for just a couple minutes of spraying. Um, and then of course the wait time means you got to clean the gun in between uh, the rounds and cleaning the gun, unless I get, I'm sure I'll get better at it, but it took me like a half hour just to clean the gun properly. So an hour of cleaning the gun, uh, a couple hours of, of sanding everything smooth, getting it masked up just to get it ready to spray. And really it was the actual spraying part was maybe five minutes between both, two and a half minutes each one. Just And half of that was moving the ladder around. So, But I'm happy with how it came out, but I can tell you that I can see why there's so much involved in actually painting an entire car when you do a pri uh, an epoxy, a sealer, and a primer, and then blocking it and prepping everything, and then doing the base coat and the clear coat, and then wet sanding everything. Oh my gosh, that's why it costs so much when you have a car professionally painted. There's a ton of labor involved. And just looking at what I did just to paint a window frame with some epoxy primer. So anyway, what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to leave the truck here. Um, I'll try to get the unmasking on video and um, I'll take some close-up videos to show you what the uh, current spray looks like so you can kind of see that. For now, though, that's about all we're going to do. Uh, hopefully, when you see this truck again, it'll have a windshield in it and we're going to talk about what we're going to do. Oh, I did promise that, didn't I? Well, I need to get my ladder. Let me get something and show you. All right, so earlier I talked about an 80s paint motif on this truck as a possible idea for, for doing it. And that's kind of coming back in the style. And also it was what I grew up with all the toys that I had. Any of the four wheel drive trucks had that similar paint job. Now there was in the late seventies, I think it was called the freewheeling edition or freewheel. I might be wrong, but there was a Ford package and it was like a, a brown and it had the yellow that went up the side and it kind of faded from yellow to orange or orange to yellow, I forget which way. But um, you can look that up and, and find, I think it's called the Free Will Edition. I'll check that when I do the editing. But um, that kind of motif and, and standard from the 80s was kind of cool. And uh, well, I have this. This thing is like a fake version of Bigfoot. I think it was a Radio Shack toy. And um, for some reason, this has made it through. I haven't thrown it out in all the years. It's Radio Shack, radio controlled. I don't even know if it works. I don't have the controller for it, but the paint job on it it is a blue, obviously, with some, but it's got that 80s, you know, off-white, yellow, and orange-red, and the way the, the stripes go. It's got the 80s uh, roll bar in the back with the off-road lights, fake supercharger, stuff like that. But um, this is just kind of a cool motif. Now, obviously, this is on a late 70s version of a Ford, and then very similar kind of style that you would have seen in the 80s on the Fords. The big question is, is what a similar paint job look kind of cool on something like this. It was really just a shop truck. It's not going to have these big tractor tires on it. But check this out. Let me see, let me give you some close-ups of it. And uh, we might have to put it on the truck and, and handhold the camera and walk you around it because uh, we're getting out of the light when we do that. But that's kind of what I was thinking. I'm not sure this would be the exact thing I'd want to do, but I kept looking at this and uh, it's been sitting up on the shelf here in the shop for a while and I keep staring at it. And then I keep staring at this truck with all the damage it has and, and going, you know, if, if I wanted to learn how to paint a car, first of all, it was a pain in the butt doing this. I'm not sure I'm ready to commit to this, but it would be cool to do something like this. And that would be a pretty ambitious project. But if I could do that, well, I could paint my Spitfire. So in the meantime, I'm probably going to have the Spitfire professionally done in case you're wondering, because I know there's some people who are like, no, don't paint the truck. You got to work on your Spitfire. And I will. I'm going to keep working on that. I do believe on that car, we're probably going to take it to a local place and have it professionally done. Um, but I do want to do something on my own, whether it's the Fox Body Mustang, whether it's this truck, you know, something just to learn how to do it in practice um, and knowing that, hey, it's probably not going to come out best because I don't have a paint booth. 
and uh, I don't have a lot of practice. So, but it would be nice to learn how to do that and, and have the experience. So anyway, thought that was kind of cool. Let me go ahead and wrap this video up. Like I said, if I do it before I edit, I'll cut in and show you with the windshield done and with the masking pulled off. Otherwise, we'll do a third follow-up video just to show you that when the time comes. All right, we'll catch you soon. I'll try to keep some videos flowing here on Vortex Garage.